been thinking, why do some people snore and not others? Is there anything we can do to prevent it? Today, we will examine how the manner in which we breathe greatly impacts our lives with the secondhand advice from the book, Breath by James Nestor. We don't spend a great deal of time thinking of breathing. We all recognize that it's necessary to survive. However, it's not something we need training in or to think of, correct? It's merely something we do. Well, prepare to be amazed. The different ways we can breathe can have a considerable impact on our health. Breathing and chewing can, in fact, restructure our faces, enlarge our airways, and help us conquer everything from asthma to stress. Extreme breathing methods can help us experience hallucinations or gain control over our heart rate and body temperature. Yet, the power of breathing has been oddly underexamined in Western scientific research. Join me on a voyage into the lives of the pulmonauts, as writer James Nestor calls them, those that, like him, have committed themselves to discovering the extraordinary power we can tap into with the essential act of breathing. Today, you'll learn why you should, under no circumstance, breathe through your mouth, why carbon dioxide is the most misunderstood gas in the world, and how a mail carrier learned to run a half marathon shirtless in the Arctic Circle. Let's begin with why it's more beneficial to take a breath through your nose than your mouth. Estimates state that around 50% of us breathe primarily through our mouths. There are many factors for this, such as health problems, pollution, and stress. But the more you do it, the worse it becomes. The nose is far more critical than you realize. It doesn't just take air in, it also cleanses it, heats it, and moistens it. It generates a release of chemicals that lower blood pressure and regulate heart rate. When you take in unprocessed air through your mouth, you get none of these advantages. A cruel experiment in the 1970s and 1980s took a group of rhesus monkeys and plugged their nostrils. They were closely monitored and photographed for up to two years. It's disheartening even to take a look at the photographs. The monkeys' dental arches tightened and their teeth grew crooked. It didn't merely affect their health, it affected the shape of their heads. However, when researchers removed the nostril plugs, the monkeys' faces went back to normal within six months, all because of how they were breathing. For numerous reasons, the human head has developed in ways that are ill-suited for healthy breathing. However, for centuries, we managed relatively well. It has only been in the last 300 years or so that significant issues appeared. In the early 18th century, there was a considerable change in the Western diet. Breakthroughs in food processing meant that in general, our diets started becoming softer. This had ripple effects on our bodies, specifically facial structure. Once people didn't need to chew as much, their mouths didn't expand, which triggered a massive increase in both orthodontic and breathing issues. Breathing in is crucial, but so is breathing out. It's effortless to boost the capacity of the lungs. Even a simple stroll or bike ride can broaden the lungs by 15%. So what's actually taking place here? Why is breathing out so important? Isn't it just getting rid of air that we don't need? Slow, shallow breathing yields surprising health benefits. Calm, slow moving breaths at this speed are incredibly beneficial increasing blood flow to the brain and enhancing efficiency throughout our bodies. Why is it better to breathe this way? Biochemistry chronicles the exchange process that starts and ends in our lungs. 
The oxygen in the air we inhale binds itself to our red blood cells and moves around the body to be used by our cells. They're traded for carbon dioxide particles, which then travel back to the lungs and are exhaled out. Yet carbon dioxide is much more than just waste. It plays a vital role in triggering the oxygen to separate from the blood cells. It also helps expand blood vessels, making them broader so they can carry extra blood. When we breathe heavily, we eliminate all of our carbon dioxide, which reduces blood flow. That's why working out or a panic attack can cause lightheadedness, or headaches. On the other hand, taking a breath slowly leaves extra carbon dioxide in the system, which means more power and efficiency. That's why it's beneficial to take a breath gradually and also less deeply. We take in far more air than we require. So even if you're breathing slowly, there's little danger of not inhaling enough oxygen. It could feel unusual, but you genuinely don't have to fill your lungs up to full capacity each time. It's easy to do. The ideal breath is a five and a half second inhale and a five and a half second exhale, totaling five and a half breaths per minute. Even if you only breathe like this for a couple of minutes every day, it can do wonders. As we talked about earlier, modern life isn't conducive to the way we breathe. For the last 300 years, refined food has meant that, that we've had to chew a lot less, which in turn minimized the size of our mouths, made our teeth crooked, and obstructed our air passages. It's a fundamental reason why breathing problems are so common these days, from snoring to asthma. However, here's the bright side. Since our behaviors induce these issues, it's remarkably straightforward to change the trend. It's even feasible to alter the shape of our mouths as some exciting developments in orthodontics have revealed. The easiest solution to the problem of smaller mouths is to have excellent oral posture. You should hold your lips together with your teeth touching a little and put your tongue on the roof of your mouth. As long as you're sitting or standing correctly, this can keep your airways open. You can make many simple solutions, both to open up your airways and take advantage of great breathing habits. Taking things even further can result in superhuman capabilities. One well-known regulating technique is TAMO. This breathing method that means inner fire was developed by Tibetan Buddhists a millennium ago. It also creates tremendous changes in body temperature. Its followers can endure the freezing elevations of the Himalayas in thin clothes and thaw the snow around their bodies with the heat. It's not only Tibetan Buddhists who can do this either. You may have heard of Wim Hof, a former Dutch mail carrier. He achieved comparable results. He became famous in the 2000s for running a half marathon in the Arctic Circle without a shirt or shoes. Scientists also injected him with E. coli in one experiment. They monitored him in disbelief as they watched his body successfully battle the infection. How did Hoff and the Tummo practitioners accomplish all this? With a careful and exhausting heavy breathing system not the soft steady push that we've been talking about, but an aggressive push of air that compels the body to respond. Our bodies are forced into a state of stress from all that heavy breathing. Because of this extreme state, you can hack the autonomic nervous system, which regulates body functions usually beyond conscious control. Hoff's own simplified approach created for Westerners also includes repeated exposure to extreme cold. These approaches are still controversial and are not to, to be embarked on lightly, but they offer testament to the fantastic things breathing can do for our bodies. 
If we push the heavy breathing even farther, they can impact the mind along with the body with results comparable to those of hallucinogens. In 1956, a psychology student named Stanislav Grof volunteered for a drug trial. A hundred micrograms of an unusual new substance caused him to have vivid, transcendent visions. He was one of the first people to try LSD. A decade later on, LSD was prohibited, so Groff established his own legal alternative. He called it holotropic breathwork. He uncovered that many hours of heavy breathing could cause extreme hallucinations. Why? The answer, once more, is carbon dioxide. Diversifying our levels of carbon dioxide can open visionary pathways and change our consciousness. As we discussed previously, heavy breathing causes our carbon dioxide levels to go down. The severe heavy breathing of holotropic breath work has an additional impact. It lowers blood circulation to the brain, mostly impacting areas in charge of our sense of self and the passage of time, hence the visions. It's still a controversial therapy that hasn't been widely researched, yet some have labeled holotropic breath work as a therapeutic breakthrough treatment. The power of breathing is still unfamiliar in the West, but elsewhere it's ancient wisdom. About 3,000 years back, a powerful idea surfaced in Asia. The Indians called it prana and the Chinese called it chi. It's also known as energy or life force. Prana, chi, or whatever name you give it, it flows around and through everything in the universe. However, it is most intense in things that are alive. So to remain healthy and balanced, you need to maintain your prana. It's weird to think that modern science still has a lot to learn about something as essential to us as breathing, but this is one place where so-called developments in lifestyle haven't kept up with advancements in healthcare. Here's the thing. You don't have to be an expert practitioner of a severe breathing method such as TUMO to harness the power of breathing well. You do not even need to rely on prana. All you need to do is inhale for five and a half seconds, out for five and a half seconds, and repeat. Let's review. Changing how you breathe can have compelling results. By breathing through your nose instead of your mouth, slowly and not too deeply, and correctly engaging your diaphragm, you can do wonders for your health. It's possible to take things even farther and accomplish superhuman human feats all through the power of breathing. Are you a mouth breather or a nose breather? Have you ever tried any extreme breathing methods? Comment below with your best advice. Please be sure to like and subscribe as well. And thank you for watching. Here's an odd but effective method to stop snoring. Sleep on a tennis ball. Lying on your back when you sleep puts greater pressure on your throat. So shifting to your side may work. To improve your odds of actually staying asleep on your side, sew a tennis ball into the front pocket of an old t-shirt, then wear the t-shirt backwards to bed. This should make it super uncomfortable to lie on your back once you drift off. Once you've adjusted to the new sleep position and stopped snoring, you can ditch the uncomfy shirt.